I think you should try it. It's for our viewers, Christy. Um, nope, I'm trusting you. It's for our viewers. No, I do not want to touch that fence. You think I can wrestle her down and get her onto the fence? Bye. <laughs> Well, Christy, it's that time of year for critter control. I'm kind of embarrassed this year. Our bigger sweet corn looks horrible. We didn't get a stand. We talked to you about that in a little earlier video. But what we do have, we want to salvage. We think we might get just a few ears, maybe just enough for a meal or two. We certainly don't have enough to share in that, but hopefully the second crop will have some to share. Anyway, in order to save that, we've got to get our electric fence up. In this area, we have raccoons just come through here and they'll just totally destroy it. We have some of the fattest raccoons you've ever seen. So stay tuned, we'll show you how we do this. And we've actually improved it a little bit this year. I think it's gonna be easier, Christy. So you can see these. These are a kind of a standard insulator that we were using on the corner posts. So we would use these posts for the corners. I mean, they were tall enough. I'll show you that in a minute, but we don't need very tall fence. We just needed uh, a little stronger post for the corners than the centers. So what we would do is we would use these. They've got, this is the wire that holds onto the fence. And then the wire that actually is insulated goes through there, just like that. Every one of these, we'd have to take off in the fall and put back on the next summer. Christy would run them through here. We'd use pliers and tighten them all up again. It took a long time. So this year we're using T-posts because of a solution we saw at the farm show in February. These things are called lock jaws. They will just go right on a T-post in any, I think there's six different angles you use to get them on or off. You know, basically any angle you can come, come up with, they will fit right on a T-post. So that's a lot quicker, see? And then you can run your wire right through this back part. And then for these side posts, we've tried two separate styles. One is this real flimsy post, and it works fairly well if you can get it into the ground. It works well because these are very easy to slide up and down and again your wire can fit right in there. Another approach more recently is this type of post. This one the wire actually just goes right down in here. You don't need any extra insulators at all. And you just stick it in the ground, step right on it and move on. So we use these along the side where we don't need necessarily the strength of the corner post for tightening it. I'm not really worried about how I angle these posts because those lock jaws will go on in any different angle that we care. Neighbor Bob named this thing for us. He called it the Kerplunker. <laughs> Kerplunk. Yeah. I did get out the water the other day, so hopefully our second planting will do better than our first planting did. Hey, let's go look. There's some corn stress down here. Let's show some people what it looks like. Oh. So it's a little shadowy here, but maybe you can kind of see it. There's two or three things that make it illustrate that this corn is stressed pretty bad. This last row more than the rest. First, you can see that the leaves have kind of curled up and they begin to point upward more. We refer to that as rolling. The corn is rolled up. Hmm. And uh, my grandfather would have said it's rolled up like cigars. Sometimes they get really tight like that. Okay, the other thing is, is that the green looks a little pale, just kind of this lighter color. This is really dry. It needs more water. I'm a little surprised at that because, well, it is pretty dry here. I watered lot yesterday and today. Yeah, well, you didn't get it enough today. That's for sure. Here's an example of a leaf that's really rolled up yep. tight. And uh, so that one's, that one's really dry. So just for reference, I watered this morning for over an hour. Over an hour? Yeah. And it's such I, a big circle that we're watering, Christy, that you're not getting much water. Okay. Even in an hour. I mean, God can do a lot in just a couple minutes. That's true. It takes us a long time to do it by hand. Some of that in there in the middle looks much, much better. Now, see how this leaf is, it's, it's, it's got that nice, better color green, and it's not, it's not tightened up, right? It's not stiff. So this, uh, these plants are much more healthy. None of these have that curl in them. So you can get these lock jaws at lockjaws.com, J-A-W-Z.com. And um, this is a 100 pack. You can get them in several different sizes. Uh, this is a very economical way to get it. If you use coupon code TTWT, 
you'll get a 10% discount. So these are, these are really nice. Now for our application, we need two wires. We find that we want the, the bottom wire to be just above the grass level, as low as we can get it. We don't want anything coming in below that. Now we're gonna put this thing on here such that the wire will come around the outside of the post. That's another advantage of what we got. Now we could put it at several different angles. That may be a little bit too high. What do you think? There it goes. We also have other critters besides raccoons. Yeah, we have possums sometimes. Yeah. Th these two pieces right here that have the spring in them on both sides, you want to make sure that one of those is catching the edge of the post. So that's what we've done here. Right, and we'll put the other one right about there. Okay, so we've got both of those spring pieces in this case holding a post. Christy, this project's going to be like tenfold easier like this. Yeah. See, one, one of the keys is to getting your post perfectly vertical. You know, you can't have any leaning in your posts. Oh my goodness, yeah. I don't think the critters are going to worry about perfection in the post. As long as they feel a little zzz when they get there. How was good. that again? Zzz. I think you've done all these now in the time it used to take me to get one thread through the hole and then tie it in the back. Oh, they were a pain. Just have to kind of catch one of these knobs here with a little bit of the jaw and then they'll be ready to go. I think that'll be enough of these big posts. Then I think I'll have, we'll have enough of these black ones. One of the beauties of these black posts is we can go ahead and run the wire without them in. Right. And we can put these on after the fact. Yeah, oh, this sorry. is going to be like a 10 minute job plus the 10 minutes it took to get everything out. Now, honestly, this is one of the hardest aspects, is figuring out how to manage this year to year. This wire wants to get all tangled up. We try our best to, you know, have a consistent way of wrapping it here so it won't be tangled. I guess I don't see any reason to run new wire every year. Okay, we're to the first corner. Let's see how this goes. I'm just going to run it in there, over the top of that, pull it on through, and it's loose for now. You know, we don't get much out of these things because they're so inexpensive. But when we find something like this that will make people's lives easier, we feel like we just have to show it on the channel. If you have a way that you use wire from year to year and store it and it unrolls easier the following year, leave a comment. Let us know. We might try it. There might be a better way to roll up the wire and store that year to year. But I think folks will be hard pressed to find a better way to put these insulators on the T-post than that. It looks pretty tight. Sometimes we have to tighten it again during the season, but really not very much if we do. And so what I did right there is since we had it long enough, I just made a new loop wrapped it around here several times. You can see that's what I had done last year. And I'll probably just cut off this extra wire. So it looks like if your wire isn't long enough from one year to the next, you can just add another piece of wire. Yeah, I suppose if we were really accurate, we'd put these posts in exactly the same place and have exactly the same size fence each year, wouldn't we, Christy? Yeah, we're not that big of a perfectionist. As long as our corn is secure and safe from the neighborhood critters, it doesn't really matter. I think that's pretty much it, yeah. So I'm using the same approach here. I've got my wire ran through a loop. I'm going to tighten it. This should be stretching the wire all the way around. It's nice to have this bottom one fairly tightly stretched. Don't they make a, something that's mechanical to stretch the wire? Yeah, there's, there's a type of electric fence called a high tensile fence. Okay. That's, that's better for actual you know, like horses and things like that. Yeah, for that situation, then they would use a, a more professional stretcher. For our situation, an amateur stretcher like me is fine. <laughs> so for this to work, it needs to be one continuous wire from our power supply to ground. So what I'm gonna do here, since I've got a little extra wire, is I'm gonna use that to tie up to this other wire, to essentially tie, to tie the two wires together. Basically because you want the current to flow through both wires, but from one source, right? Right. So it may not look incredible, but 
that's what we've got. Bottom wire tied to the top wire right there. Now this is our fence controller. We've bought the cheapest one you can buy, literally. I do not think I saw a cheaper one. I'm not saying we paid the least amount. I'm saying that there is none less featured that I know of. This one says two miles. Well, our fence is probably 400 feet, time we count both wires. Yeah. So that should be plenty. So what you see here is one of these goes to the fence, and I'm gonna hook that to this black wire below, and one of these goes to ground. And when we mean ground in this case, we mean ground. So let's first install this post, and then we'll work on wiring it up. Look at you. He-Man. Strong guy. You'll need to come back here and see our specially designed controller holder. Check that out. <laughs> Pretty high tech there, huh? Uh, yeah. But I am assuming you wanted to get it up out of the ground because you don't want it to get wet when it rains. So you don't want to leave that right on the ground with an extension cord running to it. Oh no, you, you wouldn't want this on the ground. In fact, we're going to cover this all up. We'll get three or four garbage bags thick and put over the top of all this. We'll show you when we're finished. Look at that. It's uh, suspiciously got a hook on it already. It's suspiciously the right length. Okay, so that's the power. We'll have the power come in here, power go through the wire. Now what are we going to do with the ground? We have a, an aluminum ground rod. I suppose you could use copper too. The aluminum is hardly strong enough. As you can see, it bends pretty easily. But I've got this little connector on there and my white ground wire attached. I'm going to put that right in here and I'm going to put that in all the way because when it gets dry during the season, this has got to be reaching some moisture to actually get ground. So I'll get a hammer and I'll put that all the way in or else I'll use my He-Man skills. And I think that's about it. Down to the bottom of what we tilled. We go to a lot of effort for our corn. Planting, even if planting with love kind of didn't work out so well. And I've sprayed it for the bunnies and cultivated it the other day, but it's worth it. It just doesn't taste the same when you buy it in a grocery store around here. It's a lot more worth it when we have a couple hundred ears per crop. Well, that's true. Than 15, if that yeah. many, we need 10 or so. Okay, I'm gonna take the white wire, connect it right up here. Now this is a tester to test to see if it's working. Before I always used Catrille. She's not here this year. I'm not grabbing hold of that wire. <laughs> Actually, you can grab the wire, especially you, Christy. Why me? Because I don't want to. People ask, does it hurt? And the answer is no, it doesn't hurt. But you don't want to do it again. It stings you just a little bit or, or something. It's hard to describe it as hurting, but it, it just makes it so you say, I don't think I'll do that again. And that's the objective here, right? Right. The animal comes up to it, they get a sting. <laughs> and they don't want to do it again. I'll put a link to all these parts on our Amazon store, amazon.com slash shop slash tractor time with Tim. We have a lot of interesting stuff that we use on this channel and off of this channel on that store. Go check it out, even if it's items that, you know, we're not talking about in this video. Now, when we built our shed, we had this in mind already. So we put ourselves one of these exterior outlets. And this one, you can actually totally close the lid, I think. Yeah. Now I want to make sure to use a green cord, and that's so that I won't see it when I mow. Yeah. And it'll make the sparks fly. I don't recommend a green cord, in other words. Use, a, use something bright to remind you when you mow. Fire in the hole! Do we have anything? Are you gonna try it? I'm gonna try it with this thing first. So this thing does the same thing as what we're doing. We've got a pin that we stick in the ground. And the other end we hook on the fence. Yeah. Let's try the other one. We got fire on both of them. Okay, Christy, it's time for you to test it. I don't trust this tester. I have something else to do. Okay. I don't like being shocked. Okay, so it's honestly a little bit hard to get up the courage. Now, the way this works is it's not a constant um, current. It pulses about once a second. So you grab a hold of it and you think, I'm not sure it's on, and then it and then it jolts you. Jolts you. And here we go. 
That wasn't as bad as I expected. It's not as bad as I thought. I think you should try it. <laughs> it's for our viewers, Christy. Um, nope, I'm trusting you. It's for our viewers. No, I do not want to touch that fence. I drive tractors. I try strange vehicles, but no. Uh-uh. You think I can wrestle her down and get her onto the fence? Bye! <laughs> Come on, you can try that fence. The electric fence challenge. Haven't you heard about it? It's all over the internet. No. <laughs> it's not that bad. Uh. <laughs> Why was I scared? <laughs> Makes you feel silly, doesn't it? Yeah. Now we'll just come along here and... You have it unplugged now, right? <laughs> Guys, I need some help. I have to live with him all the time. So those really work well. Okay, so the key to this, continuing to work, is keep the grass away from it. A leaf or two won't, won't hurt too much, but if you get grass growing up in there, a lot of it, it'll ground that fence and it won't be effective anymore. I usually take the weed eater under it every time I mow. Christy, those lock jaws have made this job so much easier. Yes, trivial. Yeah, we really just had one problem that was difficult. The rest of it was pleasant on an evening like this evening. Yeah. And the lock jaws removed that one problem. I'm We're keeping these. I'm glad we found them. Yeah. Lockjaws.com, TTWT for 10% off. For some reason, this is usually my part of the job. So we just want to keep this thing from getting wet. So I just use a garbage bag and uh, try to wrap it around it several times and then I'll put another garbage bag over it. And then I save any really long twisty ties or you can use zip ties, something like that, to just tie it on. You just don't want it getting really wet. And then I think I'll put another one over it. And that's just in case the first one rips. Yeah. I really like sweet corn. It's, it's one of my favorites. Well, sweet corn, when you grow your own, is just unbeatable. Yeah. And you might say, well, what's different when you grow your own? Well, you can eat it right out of the patch, and it's so much fresher. Oh, I just come out right before a meal and grab just enough for that meal and go in and, you know, cook it right then, and there's, there's not much better. There you go. Well, I think now you've seen how to build a simple electric fence. I mean... It doesn't get much simpler than this. No, it wasn't hard at all. I might could have done this by myself, but it's funner with you. Yeah, well, you know, I like to feel needed at least a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Let me know if you have any questions on just how we did this simple electric fence. Understand we're not saying this is an electric fence capable of holding uh, livestock or anything like that. This is purely to keep the coons and the possums out of our sweet corn. And it does a fabulous job. We've proven it now for at least five years. So subscribe to our channel, check out some of our other videos, and uh, take pity on Christy for having to touch that fence. <laughs> yeah. And we'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor time, time with, with Tim. Tim. Right? Critter control this was supposed to be. Yeah, I didn't realize I was the big critter.